it was purchased by a chap called William Spence in 1731, but it belonged to somebody else before. The earliest deeds I have were starting to be drawn up in about 1731, and I've got them, they're in the solicitor's office in the Cooper. And I was actually doing some work at the university in St Andrews in the Butte building, which was a medical research. And at my lunch break, I went down to a local property centre and saw an advert for this place. And that was in October. I put it in the back window of my car. I next looked at it about the next March or April. And I thought, I need somewhere to stay. I'll go and have a look at it. So I did. And it had for sale in the window, a little for sale sign. And I thought, this is actually really nice. So I accidentally pulled down the for sale sign, <laughs> let it fall to the floor. And I bought it within a week. And nobody else was interested. It didn't look exactly does it now, it was a lot tidier. <laughs> I had continuous floors, but not as solid as that one. And um, and the reason I moved here because I was brought up in Kingsbarns and there was one pub there which is actually still open again and uh, I used to come down here and visit the Jewel Tavern which is in West Amsterdam and I thought wouldn't it be nice if I lived somewhere within walking distance of the pub and I'd get a bus back at the Michael time of night <laughs> so I, I moved in on Friday the 13th of May 1983 and my 33rd anniversary has just passed on the 13th year. I had, um, there was nothing in here. There was a horrible fireplace, there was an electric fire that replaced the gas one. I picked it up and it fell apart. I brought with me an airbed, a sleeping bag, an electric kettle and some tea bags. Went to the pub, had a cup of tea at the end of the night and woke up here. That's it, I've been here ever since. There was also a piece of wall came out, you couldn't see out that window, it was like at the bottom of the stair. And that's where I found Betsy the doll. There was a bit of wall stuck out here. And this was, my nephew was here at the time, this is a little doll in pages of a, a sign book that um, fell out of the, the wall when I removed it. There was wall that came out here and the stair was slightly different and it came out to about here and it stopped you looking out the window so delved into it and then that sort of just fell out about halfway up and we're right in that wall well that's the new stair so probably dates from about 1800s so that's probably when Betsy dates from and you see it's a big crude bit of doll isn't it it's very simple just a bit of cloth a little bit of linen, perhaps. Because Amsterdam is famous for one thing, well, famous for lots of things, but um, in the, I think it was late 18th century, there was a, fil a hellfire club set up here, along at Drill Castle, which is along the other end. There's a castle has gone. And uh, it was an old men's club, and. They had a young lady dance for them and in an unclosed situation and she her name was Betsy Wilson. So I reckon that could be the ghost of Betsy. <laughs> there was other artefacts um, that a friend of mine who thought she was doing me a favour threw them out. There was a George II coin, there was a little bottle with a broken neck. There was, oh, there was ears of corn and dried peas. And I've got um, a second spiritual midden in a plastic box which was in the cupboard behind when I moved the hot water tank. 
Initially, the hot water tank was there, and I had to fit that one, and there was boards down the back of where that tank is now, and there were tongue and groove boards, and they were it was loose, and it was down the back of the back of there. Because this bit's an extension on the, on, the, on the building. It's built much later. And this is what I found as a, a shoe polish tin, parts from the garden. And this is what I found in behind the hot water tank, well, where the hot water tank was now. Well, the marbles came from when I replaced the half of the fire. It's just That's a, allegedly a spiritual midden. A bit of glass. But that's, I would say, just over a hundred years old. Because it was superstition. And it's a stop there. I haven't had a witch come down the chimney yet. <laughs> Demons and witches. Yeah. They were still to carry on the tradition of concealing. So it was, it was, it was an ongoing um, superstitious sort of thing. People were doing what their ancestors did. Well, it's The fireplace originally was much bigger, it went all that way in and this has been downsized by this much smaller fireplace because the chimney inside goes right up and I've climbed up it in the past when I was slightly more slender than I am now and before I fit the stove and at one point those beams would have been continuous and there's a, sh a shelf in there you can get a build up a suit on it and at one point it must have gone on fire and you see the ends of those timbers are all burnt yeah, you see how there's been a fire in there, which must have been quite alarming to the inhabitants. And um, it's probably a time when it had a lath and plaster wall in front of it. Yeah. Those beams go right all the way back to the flue. They're all charred at the back, but I think they've done all the burning there's been any. Yeah. <laughs> I found the markings at the, in 1983. And people say, no, oh, they're just builder's marks or Masonic marks or something like that. And it wasn't until 1999 when a friend of mine, Marie, brought up a copy of the Wilden Downland magazine, 1999. And said, there's pictures in there, look a bit like what you've got. So we went, what do you have? So I got in touch with Timothy Eason. And he said, uh, Oh, you certainly got some markings there. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you can see there's Abbey Maria Beatus and K for Christ, King of Kings. And the other one's not entirely sure what they It's also got taper bubbles, which is to protect the property allegedly against fire. That is the earliest. Yeah. The The taper burn has a card, and then somebody's cut that mark into a taper burn. So the, the, the narrow ones are, are later than the taper burns, and the taper burns are later than the original race knife marks. But if you see here, there's been a pentacle thing here with a four on top. See that? Ah, yeah. yeah. And if you look at the bottom, bottom edge, see those tiny little thin ones right along ah. the bottom edge? And there's, there's very, very faint ones there. Yeah. But they're all in the, the sketch I did. That was because somebody at a later date put a duke, if we call it a duke, a wooden peg in to hold a gas fit in that. <laughs> and see how there's like very faint little marks right along the edge? Yeah. Somebody's been, and that very faint. But they're much later. These are the oldest ones. I think they're called whatever a race knife is. It's a, some sort of woodworking tool. 
no, it's even, see the very faint ones I can see here. So it's quite an interesting bit of wood that. I went up to Krigivar Castle more than 10 years ago and there's markings in the lower part and in the ladies with drawing room at Krigivar Castle. Uh, not as big and distinct as that. I also went to Provost Skeen's house in Aberdeen. There's some very faint ones there. The palace at Kouras, which is to the west of here, I found some quite thin spidery ones in there, which I told them about. And also there's supposedly some markings up at Pitt Medden. I went to see them and I couldn't find them, because they were on garden furniture. <laughs> But these are the best, so far, set of markings found in Scotland. Mm -hmm. When I found the markings, I just thought, oh, they're just people ha ha in them. In fact, the local archaeological establishment ha ha in them. But it made a huge difference in my life. I've been standing here. Now you're talking to you, <laughs> it wasn't for that. And it, it's quite, yeah, it has changed. It influenced what I do. Mm. Not necessarily through superstition, but just because of the interest in the artefacts. A few years back, I rebuilt that window sill. Okay. And I put in that new piece of wood, because the was wasn't as nice as that. And I rebuilt them there. And I had an old um, Victorian walking stick with a silver top on it, which wasn't in very good condition. And it's actually in there for people to find in the future. Because I thought it would be in the spirit of the place. It's as this place is.